this weekend we have the united states biggest burnout contest ever and we have got my hellcat behind us that has over 176,000 miles on it and we just did a huge build pistons rods a four and a half liter whipple supercharger and we even put it on a holly i don't know if the car is going to make it it literally leaves in two days and there is so much to do if you all know the last 10 percent is 90 percent of the work we still have to put it on the dyno, tune it, get everything right. I mean, there's so much new on this car. So we're gonna walk you through it on this episode. We're gonna slap her on the dyno, see what kind of power she makes, but it is an absolute animal and it is ear deafening loud. The exhaust, the long tube headers from Texas Speed. I mean, it is just absolutely mind blowing. I can't wait to show you this car. Probably the biggest upgrade we have done on the car is a freaking Holly Dominator. Check this out, it works with the stall condition. guys the car literally drives like a stock but before we throw it on the dyno we are going to put an expansion take on the intercooler side way bigger blower it's going to generate some heat so we're putting it in as a precaution normally when you do a hellcat and you put a four and a half liter whipple on it they were just run the stock system but we actually deleted part of the intercooler so we are going to throw in an expansion tank just to get more water content in the car to help keep it cooler all right, so here's the expansion tank we're gonna put in. This is actually the same fuel cell that I use for my race setup on Dr. Pepper, and we're gonna mount it in front of the driver's side front tire. So we gotta cut out the bumper about right here. We're gonna get the old saws all out, one it out, saws all it out. Right now we're pinching off the intercooler lines. Like I told you before, the car's supposed to leave really soon on the transporter with all the other burnout cars going to Bristol. And as you can see, we've got it up on the lift. So we took it out for a drive. We couldn't get into any boost. Unfortunately, we got her back on the lift and we're gonna start diving into the tuning a little bit. We also gotta do an expansion tank for the supercharger because it is a lot bigger. It's gonna be pumping out some serious heat. And if you remember what happened to this car last time doing a burnout is the supercharger got so hot, it literally expanded and locked up in the case, which shut the whole burnout down and it just sounded absolutely terrible. So we're thinking if we add a lot more water to the system, it can keep it cooler, especially with the bigger blower. So we're gonna put that on and mess with the tune and hopefully put it on the dyno tomorrow, but the car's gotta leave tomorrow. There's, there's no way around that. So I'm really not sure if it's gonna make it. I mean, this is literally gonna be the United States biggest burnout contest ever. So if we can have a built Hellcat there on a standalone ECU, I mean, I'm dying to get it there, but there's so much to do. some wiring for the radiator fans and intercooler pump while Drew's getting that expansion tank welded in. We got some storms rolling in. I'm just loving the pressure. We're sweating our butts off, jamming out to some music, cranking. It's late night Monday, crunch time. Beautiful night. Got some thunder rolling around out there. Bring it on. Got the car on the dyno, let's do some rips. I literally have the trailer here, I'm taking it with me tonight, so fingers crossed we get this thing dialed because it's supposed to leave on the transporter as soon as possible.
744, but she's breaking up at about 6,500 RPM. Air to fuel is leaking consistent at about 12 all the way across. Air to fuel looks good. Just breaking up up top. No. That was a rev one. Oh, it's a rev? Oh, you have it way down. 6,500? 7,000. What's that? 7,000. Is that what it was at? Yeah. Cool. How, many, how much timing was that? Uh, about 12 degrees. 12 degrees? Yeah. So we got seven more degrees. Seven more to put on it? Probably huh? maybe like up to 18. What are you doing this time? Sprinkle a little timing in there? A little magic dust. Make it go faster. <laughs> well, you said that was, that was how much? It was 12 degrees last time? Uh, yeah, that was 12 degrees peak. Um, you know, we're looking probably maybe up to 18 degrees if the car is happy. You know, and that so was, uh, how, mu how much boost was that? Uh, it's making about 17 pounds right now. So 17? Pretty conservative. Do you have the smooth boost turned down? No, nah, that's, that's all it's, it's got. All, it's all it's got? Yeah. Noise. Noise. Maybe making 17 pounds of boost, but it's pushing a lot of air through that bigger blower. He said he only had to touch this thing up three times so it wouldn't leak. That's number two. different on that pull? I just added a little bit of timing, smoothed the air fuel out a little bit more. You know, just crossed Yeah, that air fuel is looking dialed. So then around, what, around 12? Is that what you're targeting? Yeah. Okay. So the car is breaking up at about, what, 6,500? Yep. 6,500, the limiter is at 7,000. So we are checking out the Ollie here and we're tracing it back to what we you believe is a fuel this, pressure this issue. This line right here is the fuel pressure and it's solid and then it kind of starts Dropped dwindling down, down. And then right about where you see these squiggly lines is where the car is breaking up. Yeah. So we're actually tracing it back to voltage, right? Battery voltage. So the pumps are basically drawn, everything's drawn so much power that the pumps aren't performing like they should and therefore we're losing fuel pressure causing the car to break up probably blowing the spark out too because we don't have enough uh, voltage for backing up the coil packs. Yep. And that's why we heard it. Even though the car was hitting the air fuel ratio, so I don't think that the fuel was actually the problem. I think that it was blowing the spark out. Got it. And we're catching on with the fuel pressure. Makes sense. All right, so we'll make an alternator revision. And, uh, All right, so this is uh, the third or fourth rip. Let's tune the alternator a little bit so we don't lose as much voltage. See how she does. So we fixed a voltage issue and we're sitting pretty healthy at about 900 real horsepower, which is pretty dang good for a burnout car. Dude, the flames were like four feet. 
767. But, hey, it's just looking a lot better. Okay, so this car is conservatively making about 900 wheel horsepower. Now, is it capable of more? Absolutely, but it has the biggest pulley you can put on the supercharger. And with the pistons and rods, it's definitely capable of more. But we're gonna play the safe route, get her home, get her on the transporter to go to Bristol because it is so loud and I cannot wait to hear this thing rip in the stadium. Okay, so we're trying something a little different for this pull. We're moving the rev limiter around so that we can get a little popping and banging and skeet and yeet and run around on the pad. What was that set at? That's 58. 58? Yep. I think that's the sweet spot. I mean, there wasn't really flames, but it just sounds like a machine gun. It's so sick. <laughs> hey guys, if you want to see a sick burnout, make sure you subscribe because we're heading to Bristol, baby. Woo! As a fellow car guy, I know it's super easy to forget to take care of yourself, especially when you're at the track. We're all drinking Mountain Dew and Dr. Pepper. This toothbrush is only $39. It's a great electric toothbrush. That's what I use every day. Normally they're $59, but if you click the link in the description below or use my coupon code QDNASK, you can get this toothbrush for only 39 bucks. Buy one for yourself, your girlfriend, whoever. They are an awesome toothbrush. It's basically the same thing as a Sonicare except a tenth of the price. So go get one. They send you a new brush out every three months so you don't have to worry about it. It's a great deal.